process of collecting specimens in the field. So I'm gonna go over what you should bring with you. First, you'll need some type of basket. These work better than backpacks because specimens can kind of get crushed when you stack them on top of each other in a backpack. Um, and then inside your backpack, you're going to need either wax paper bags, or you can also use cleaned out old yogurt containers or really any type of Tupperware. Then you'll need an ID card. And we'll go over filling this in later, but you're just gonna put the information like the date, the location, that sort of thing. Then you'll need a pen to write down that information. And that's about it. Let's get going. Hey guys, so we found a mushroom. Let's go over the process of collecting it. Okay, so it's right here. It's growing in a cluster. And so you're gonna wanna clear the material around it. And then, this is really important, you don't just want to pick it up by these stems. You want to dig down a little bit further into the substrate to make sure you're not leaving any hidden structures of the mushroom that might be growing below the soil. So it actually looks like this one is growing on a branch. It's not even in the soil. Okay. our specimen and taken its data, let's head back to the lab. Hi, welcome to the lab. So now I'll show you what we do with the specimens once we get back from the field. So this is the mushroom we collected earlier and this is its data card. So the first thing that I would do is remove um, excess dirt that we don't want to be storing with the sample. This specimen is already pretty clean, but I can remove a little bit of soil that was left on from the field. Then what we'll do is we'll take a picture for the photo database next to a roller so that way we can remember the size of the specimen. So now that we've taken pictures, there's two last steps. The first one is prepping for molecular analysis. So for that procedure, we'll take a small part of the mushroom's tissue and put it in extraction buffer. And this will preserve the mushroom so that we can later run DNA extraction, amplification, and analysis. The next step is drying out the specimen. And this is done in the fume hood for two weeks. And then after that, the specimen is stored in the freezer for 24 hours, and then it's ready for long-term storage. So now that we've gone over the procedure that we use on specimens, once we bring them back from the field, I'll show you two specimens that have already dried for two weeks in the fume hood. As you can tell, they shrink a lot in size, and they're stored in these plastic bags with the same ID card that we filled out in the field. And with that, they're ready for long-term storage. Thanks for learning about mushrooms with me today. Bye!